ったお前の姿なんだよ今まで黙っていて悪かった。So I said it before and I will say it again when it comes to Immoral Guild. I think that the episodes that we get that specifically hone into a character, Takashiko, specifically Takashiko, mm, Takashiko. But regardless, the episodes that we get specifically hone into a character, not Haruki, like Medina or Takashiko or now Hanabata or before how we got uh, Enome, right? I think the episodes that have been specifically honing into like a specific character are better than the episodes that have all of the characters kind of just there. I think those are the ones that miss because it's trying to do a little bit too much. Now, uh, one thing, this episode focused a lot on Hanabata, and I will talk about that in just a moment. But, you know, last week, the week before, <laughs> the week before that, holy crap, I kind of expressed a little bit that it's a little difficult to talk about this anime because at the end of the day, it is like, it's, <laughs> it's etchy, right? Like, it's, like, etchy, etchy. And that is really what holds up the anime. That's kind of what, like, holds it up here is, you know, it being, like, you know, some high, you know, high on the etchy scale. Which, you know, at the end of the day, it's, like, it's completely okay for it to be focused on etchy. Like, at the end of the day, we need more anime that is doing a specific thing. Like, don't try and force feed etchy in a certain anime you know, just be etchy, you know, but the one thing that separates the good etchy anime from the other ones, like High School DxD or, like, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, is generally they have a good plot and storyline. Not, not, not master class, not some masterpiece, but they have a good, like, a good, decent storyline uh, with really good etchy, right? And they make, they make, they say, hey, etchy's number one, the story's number two, but at least they have one. Uh, when it comes to Immoral Guild, it... It lacks on the second a little bit more, but it does do one interesting thing. And I really noticed it this episode, right? And it's not something that I think I've, I, I think I've touched on it. I think I've basically went, I, I, I don't know why I did that. That was inappropriate. But I, I've touched on it before, and I don't think I've touched on it in this way. Uh, but that is the world building. You know, one of the things that I've always wanted to see from anime is... A world, a modern world built in a fantasy setting done good, right? And I don't think we've really gotten that, right? We always get one character isekai back into the past or, uh, you know, a character, you know, kind of in a semi-modern society, but never to this degree, right? We have Kikaru and Takashiko and all these characters, right? And they're part of a guild, They, you know, they're part of a guild, they're part of a team, there's monsters, they go on monsters. They do all the fantasy world normalities, but they do it in a world where video games exist, cell phones exist, laptops, internet, TV. Like, it's a, it's, it's our world if it was a fantasy world. And I think that has been the most interesting revelation that I've had, is this show answers the question on what would modern society look like in a fantasy world, right? You always you always watch these uh, anime, you know, especially like isekai anime, and you wonder like, oh, well, what if they get, you know, 100 years, 50 years, 10 years, 50, 100, 1,000 years in the future? What is this world that's infested with monsters, demon lords, uh, things like that look like? And this answers that question that I've kind of always had as there is a subset of people who just go about their normal life there is a subset of people that are living the fan fantasy, fantastical, kind of like, you know, out there dream. And then there's people in the middle who they live this life during the, you know, their off time and night. But then they do this life when they're working. And this is what they do for work. And they those people are the ones that typically protect the others who are your normal citizens who are doing your normal nine to fives. Uh, creating anime and, and creating video games and being office workers and call centers and calling people about their car insurance, right? You have all the normal people over here being protected by the people with jobs to do that and by the crazy hierarchical uh, type folks out there. And I just want to talk about that for a couple minutes because I think that is just so interesting and it, it provides an extra element to an anime that's pretty silly, but it answers the question of what would a modern 
a fan, a modern fantasy society look like? And I just found that so cool. And I was like, holy crap, I've never, I've never really, it's never dawned on me. Like I've said before, like, they have vacuums, that's weird. Oh, they're watching TV, that's weird. They have cell phones, that's weird. But, you know, it's like, it's now really clicky with me. Like, yo, this is a modern fantasy society where not a lot of people want to go out and just be part of a guild and slay monsters. They just, they just want to live their life, go to school, you know, text some girls, text some boys, you know, be on social media, be like Takashiko and just play video games, you know, and chill, be on the internet, do the normal stuff. They don't want to go out there and do the, the fantasy stuff, even if they have magical or magical abilities or physical abilities. They're like, I don't want to do that. So I just found that pretty interesting, and I really want to talk about that. All right, the reason I spent all that time doing that is Hanabata, double Gs, triple Xs, triple Zs, double Fs, H I Z K H Bs. Oh, not Bs. More, no, more like M N O P. You know what I mean? Like she's got the double quadruples, right? Uh, we got some, we got some itty bitty, uh, teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Uh, but we got, we got some, some big, big bazangas on the scene this episode. Uh, basically the episode could be something as this. Kikaru focusing on a team that needs that needs to be focused on. Him trying to figure out who is the best for that role. Uh, Hanabata's leading that, but at the end of the day, she has her frenzy. That's a problem. Uh, Hanabata thinks Kikaru hates her. He doesn't. Uh, then, you know, Kikaru takes it in his hands. That I'm going to tell her all about her frenzy mode. He does. Uh, she, she thinks she got invited to his house because, you know, like a date. He invited her to show her video of herself in frenzy mode. They get in some obscene situations. Uh, he tells her he knows how she feels. She thinks that, you know, it's because she likes him. He doesn't get it at all. Uh, and she beats him up. And that's pretty much what happens. And she's going to continue her frenzy mode as Kikuru tries to help her kind of put it in control. So, good episode overall. I enjoyed it. You know, I, I like I like the, the, Tigo, the Tigo Bazangas. Uh, it was fantastic. I like seeing the triple Fs on screen. They're amazing. I like how Kikuru was able to touch and feel and prod. Good for him. Uh, and I can't wait to see what we get next episode. Hopefully, more Tokushiko. No more Himokinuki, Himoki, Himoki. No more Himoki, please. I'm tired of her. Same slime situation every week. I know Kiku is ty tired of it, too. So, anyways, let me know what you guys thought. All right. See you guys later. Peace. <laughs>